Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a great day, but if not, you're about to. Welcome to My Ship Story Podcast. If you've ever wondered what it was like to work on a cruise ship, well, this is what we're about. Old and new crew members telling their stories in their own words of what it was like to work on a cruise ship. So come on over to the pool bar, order up a hurricane or a rum punch, sit back, relax, because it's time for My Ship Story. Today, everybody, we have uh, we've got Eric online, we've got Brad online. My name is Scott. Uh, we're going to start this thing off, and we're going to go and let Brad tell his first ship podcast story of what it was like getting hired on a cruise ship. Hey guys, oh. it's been a little while. <laughs> <laughs> hey Eric, what's happening? Sell any houses today? <laughs> uh, hopefully, too. Hopefully, I'll know tomorrow. We'll know. But I'm keeping my fingers awesome. crossed. Awesome. Hey, did uh, Brad? You're in. You're in Oklahoma with me. By uh, uh, by the way, everybody, I'm in Edmond, Oklahoma, and Brad is way up there in Watonga by Watonga Cheese. Uh, is that right, Watonga? Near Watonga. Near Fay, Watonga. And, Fay, uh, Fay proper. Fay proper up there There's by Watonga, if, if everybody likes Watonga cheese. Uh, but uh, and Eric is in Nashville. Um, a couple of days ago, man, we had a horrendous wind storm like for the entire day. We had 50 mile an hour winds. Did you guys have that? Any of that, Brad? Oh, god, yeah. But I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's Oklahoma. Oklahoma, yeah, it's Oklahoma where the wind <laughs> we're kind of used to that. I mean, you can't really, you can't get used to 50 to 60 mile an hour winds all day long. That's something you're never going to get used to, but it's something that you deal with. You know, you make sure that things aren't going to blow away. So, so the, so the song was accurate from the music? Uh, oh, absolutely. I when mean, the winds the come wind sweeping just, down. The yeah. wind just howls in the spring. I mean, it just rolls through here I, I don't know about a lazy uh, a hawk making lazy circles in the sky because yeah. here was there was no birds i'm telling you no no yeah. no but, we don't we just get the big thunderstorms that come through and it's not an all-day event like that they just come through you know they have wind with them you know obviously thunder lightning the you know similar stuff that you get in oklahoma you're not that far um but it just comes and goes it's we don't get like that those type of winds that last all day yeah, well, this wasn't even a, really a thunderstorm. This was just wind. <laughs> yeah, there, there was, was no, no storms, there no was nothing. No it was with it. It just, was just wind. the wind blowing. Oh, so, but that's a good place to invest in uh, wind energy. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, when it gets that high, they actually turn all the turbines off. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. They can't, they can't yeah. handle it. Oh. They can't handle it. Yeah. Maybe not a good place. Well, hey, uh, hey, everybody! This is our first. It's really podcast. a bad place for everything, especially living here. Yeah, but other have, than that, it's we great. have wind, we have <laughs> tornadoes, we have earthquakes, we have heat waves. Uh, just, I mean, it's it's tigers, nuts. tigers. We even have a tiger park <laughs> that you guys have probably heard about in it's on that. Not a tiger. It's not a tiger. <laughs> All right, hey everybody, let's get back uh, back on track here. Um, uh, you know, we all used to work on a cruise ship, and we thought it would be fun for guests to come on and everything that to tell their stories of what it was like on cruise ships. But where better to start than the three of us telling our stories of how it became that we worked on cruise ships? So uh, Brad has elected to go first. So Brad, tell us about. What it was like getting hired and uh, your experience working on a cruise ship for the first time. Right. So this is my ship story. I'm going to tell you about how it came about that I ended up working on cruise ships and kind of how I got hired and how I got there. And uh, gosh, already I'm saying, um, we're going to have to cut that out. Um, <laughs> Just keep going. Yeah, I'm going to keep going. Uh, here we go. Well, it all starts in Oklahoma. Uh, I was uh, working on a, or I was, God damn it. I knew I should practice this. No, just um, keep going. Just This is I'm, this I'm, is not YouTube red. This is just a regular YouTube. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. going. I'm going here. Here we go. Here we go. Um, so it all starts in Oklahoma. I was going to college at Southwestern Oklahoma State in Weatherford, Oklahoma. And I was also working at a bank, the First National Bank in Weatherford. I would take classes in the morning and I would work in the drive through in the afternoon. And I was uh, really going to school to, to work at the bank to be a loan officer. So I worked four years, actually almost five years as a teller. Then when I graduated, I m moved, uh, transitioned from being a teller in, into being a proof operator. And this was uh, 91, 1991. So the banks had, up? huh? Did you ever get held up? You ever have a bank robbery? No. I'm just curious. No? No. No, ah. no, no, no. Have you, never. did you ever see a million dollars in front of you? I like in a vault don't, or something? I don't think so. I was head teller for a while, so I would have to count the vault, but I don't remember how much it was. It may have been close to a million. Cool. Yeah, it was, it, it was definitely over 500,000 because I think you have to have at least 500,000. In, in the vault. Uh, but anyway, uh, that was only a short period of time. I, I mainly worked as a proof operator and a proof operator was, uh, someone that took all the transactions from the bank of the day and we ran it through this big machine. They don't do this now, but, uh, back in the day, the, the, all the banks had big machines and we would just type all the transactions in and we would balance the bank. So at the end of the day, all the debits and credits would balance and we would call it a day and and uh, get out, get the hell out of there. That's why banks close at three, because you need a couple hours from three to five to get all this stuff worked out. Um, and uh, so I, I had worked, I had, after I'd graduated, I'd worked as a proof operator for about a year. And I had gone to college to try and be a loan officer, but um, just to take a step back, uh, the whole reason that I had gotten my job at the bank in the first place as a teller and, and a part-time uh, college student was that my great uncle uh, had been a founder of the of the bank. And so my grandmother... Yeah. Nepotism my, at its finest? Yes. My <laughs> grandmother, my great uncle's sister, called him up and said, hey, my oldest grandson is uh, going to college in Weatherford and he needs a job, so you need to give him a job at the bank. And of course, my uncle did because my grandmother, you will get her way. She is the sweetest lady. She's the sweetest lady in the world, but she's a meddler the the best kind of meddler she gets in there and, and gets her way but anyway so cliff gave me a job at the bank but i i was not the only uh, uh beneficiary of, of nepotism the whole bank was full of nepotism all of the founders uh, my, my uncle was not the only one it was uh, five guys but all of them had all of their family in the bank and I was like the lowest rank. I mean, all, all the rest of them were loan officers and vice president and president and all this stuff. But just as I was transitioning from being a, a teller to a, a proof operator, we had this big shape, shake up at the bank. There, the FDIC came in and did this investigation because there was these uh, loan improprieties because these guys were doing these weird things. And so really shook the bank up. Uh, almost all of the uh, family members were swept out of the bank, all the loan officers and replaced. Uh, didn't, didn't get any fines, didn't do anything illegal, but they just swept everybody out and, um, and started over. And so I'd been, after a year as a proof operator, I went to the new president of the bank, the one that wasn't related, and said, look, I've gone to college. I've been working here for five years. I want to be a loan officer. And he said, not going to happen. I'm like, what? And he's like, not going to happen. You're related. You were not going to go through this again. You're not going to get hired. You can continue to work as a proof operator, loan officer, not going to happen. And so all of a sudden, everything that I had planned, everything that I'd been working for out the window. 
And so I was like, what am I going to do? And um, my my roommate at the time, uh, Dean. Hey, everybody. What is he going to do? <laughs> I bet I know. Hey. <laughs> but, but I don't know how it happened. I, I really, I honestly don't remember how it happened. I think I read uh, some kind of classified ad in the back of Rolling Stone or something about how to get a job on the cruise ship. And, you know, we were drunk or high or something and we were like hey let's do this and, <laughs> and so we wrote this is when you wrote a letter and you wrote a letter back and we sent in and it was a scam of course uh, we said it was like 40 bucks it was like 40 bucks but we got this kit of how to get a job on a cruise ship and it was this folder of uh names of cruise ships and addresses and kind of ideas of what you what what you needed to do to get a job job at a cruise ship so me me and dean started going through this and writing cruise ships well um there was a lot of bad information in this and, and like i said it was kind of a scam but not so much that they didn't give you some good information part of the good information they gave you was like these are these are the jobs on the ship you know cruise staff purser uh galley you know all this stuff and you need to be specific when you want a job on a cruise ship you just can't write into the cruise line and say i want to I want to work here. You have to say, I want to be a quote unquote purser, you know, you, or, or a crew staff or something like that. You can't just say, I want a job. So they did give you some good information like that. So of course, what I'd been doing, working in the bank, balancing and doing all this stuff, I was, you know, handling cash. Um, purser was right up my alley. So I applied for being a crew, per, crew purser, but Dean, he'd never done any of that. He was, kind of a farm guy. And so he applied for being a deckhand. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, looking back on it now, I mean, that's just crazy. An American you know? deckhand. They didn't hire American. Americans to be a deckhand. No. So he didn't have a prayer, but, uh, but I did. And, uh, and I, we, we, we just kept getting rejection, rejection. But then one day I get a call from this lady that said, hey, I run this um, Cruise Career Training Institute in Fort Lauderdale. And we got your resume from Cruise Line. They like what you're doing, but you have no experience. Do you want to come down, take this class, and um, we'll help you get a job on a cruise ship? And so I'm kind of like, well, fuck it. I, I don't know what else to do. So I quit my job at the bank <laughs> and I went down to Fort Lauderdale and took this. Did you drive? Weeks. Did you drive to Fort Lauderdale? I drove to Fort Lauderdale. I drove from Oklahoma to Fort Lauderdale. Wow. And, uh, and, it spent, and spent two weeks at the Cruise Career Training Institute in Fort Lauderdale in some kind of like a little strip mall next to Walgreens. Was that, a, was that another $40? <laughs> It was, I think it was like $1,200. <gasps> Back then, $1,200? Back then, it was $1,200. Oh, I think I borrowed $1,200 from my parents, even though I just quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember how that went, but I'm sure it was like, uh, hey, guys, um, you know, I I had this, like, pretty good job at a bank, but I'm going to quit that. I'm going to borrow some money from you guys. I'm going to drive down to Fort Lauderdale and. Did they borrow it from a relative working at a bank? And try and, <laughs> and work on cruise ships. Do what? Did they borrow it from a relative working <laughs> at a bank? <laughs> I should have. I should have went to Cliff and said, hey, Cliff, can I borrow to yeah. money? Yeah. Um, but anyway, I go to Fort Lauderdale and I go to this cruise career training institute. And I swear to God, one of the best times of my life. I ha I had so much fun it was like 10 or 12 of us and uh we we um, almost all of us lived in this house that was right next to the the school that we went to we all lived together uh we went to school from like nine o'clock in the morning until three in the afternoon Jeez. and and of course no no weekends so we just partied and went to the beach and just 
we we had a great time. How long was the course? Two weeks. Two weeks. So that weeks. company made like you know twenty five thousand dollars in two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Nice. But I mean, part of it was renting this house, you know, for people to stay at. So, oh, so they put you up. They included yeah, put you up. That was that was we we didn't. The right. Part of the tuition was staying at at the house for for two weeks. Yeah. Um, what happened after that? Well, um, we started applying to, to cruise lines um, just just as it ended, and a lot of us decided to stay on. So we moved out of that house and rented <laughs> another apartment, and several of us lived together. And I mean, we were still. I mean, all we did was just drive from Fort Lauderdale to Miami and try and get interviews and this kind of stuff. So the rest of the time we were just partying and hooking up and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what the training was for, because that's yeah. what happens on cruise ships. That was yeah. the training. I mean, I wished that would have continued on the cruise ships, but well, but anyway, um, so after a month, of course, everybody was running out of money. A couple of people got jobs on like Seascape, you know, those yeah. one day cruises one that would go cruises, yeah. out of, out of Fort Lauderdale. They would go out to see, they out would see come yeah. back. Actually, I met Riz on there, the cruise oh, director. Riz, Riz was working on there. And uh, anyway, after a month, I, I, I had to go back home because I ran out of money. <laughs> I had to move back in a month with my parents. <laughs> and... Uh, Kept sending out resumes and, oh, about a month went by and I was giving up hope. And all of a sudden I get a call from Royal Caribbean and I'm like, what? And every time I, every other time I tell the story, I always say it was a call from Mark McGrath, but it was Mark McGrath. I think his name was Mark Graff, uh, not the lead singer from whatever it was that night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway. He calls up and he says, hey, um, got your resume um, and I know you've been to the office and everything. We like we like what we're looking at. We like your background and everything. But typically we don't hire people from your part of the country because they just don't last. So I, I need to ask you some questions to see if you're, you're going to be right for this. And he said and he starts out. He just starts right out and he says, you know, working on ships, there's going to be gay people. Is that going to be a problem with you? Really? And he told I, you that? He, that was the very first question. He says, there's going to be gay people because I'm from Oklahoma. Oh, well, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, Hey, oy. and right. so, uh, he's like, there's going to be gay people. Is that going to be a problem for you? And I'm like, no, I, I don't care what people do. And then he's like, well, there's going to be people from other countries. You're going to hear people speaking other languages. You know, is that going to be a problem for you? And I'm like, no, that's what, that's why I <laughs> want to do this. I want to experience this. And ask me some other questions I don't remember. But basically, he's like, comes comes down and right there on the phone, he's like, okay, well, I think we can offer you, offer you a position on the Song of Norway. Uh, do you think you can be in San Juan in five days. Is that <laughs> enough time for you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I've been ready for months. I'm ready to go. And he says, well, okay, we'll send you a plane ticket. Do you have any questions? And I'm like, one question, where is San Juan? <laughs> <laughs> That's straight out of a movie. So finally figure out that San Juan is in Puerto Rico and I am stoked. I mean, I, it, this is so exotic. I mean, Puerto Rico, I mean, it does not get any more exotic than that, than that. And I'm doing, I found out I'm doing seven day cruises out of Puerto Rico to all these islands in the Caribbean that I've never heard of, never heard of maybe Jamaica, but the rest of them, St. Martin, uh, uh, Antigua, you know, uh, Barbados, Barbados, never Miami, heard of St. Thomas, St. Thomas. Yeah. Never heard of them. And I, I'm, I'm over the moon and I do not remember anything until I get to San Juan. I, I mean, it's, I, I think I'm in shock 
I don't remember anything until I get to San Juan. I get to San Juan and and I I, I I get a taxi from New San Juan to Old San Juan, and uh, get to the port. And this was 1991. Royal Caribbean had just built this brand new pier in Old San Juan, and it was beautiful. And Song of Norway was there, and Song of Norway, in my opinion, is a beautiful ship. And I was just, I was, I was blown away. So uh, I get on board. Who's uh, go to the crew person's office, and who's the first person I meet? Rick Chatterton. Oh, and cool. uh, Rick Chatterton was the crew purser. Uh, does the crew purser thing? Gives me a life jacket. You know, takes my picture and all this stuff. Takes me to my cabin. Rick takes me to my cabin, shows me what to put on, what uniform to put on, <laughs> and then takes me to the crew purse or the purser's office, the purser's desk. And when I get, uh, by the time I get to the purser's desk, I have no idea where I am. I'm lost. I, I have no idea how I got from on board the ship to the crew purser's office to my cabin to the purser's desk. I, I'm I'm befuddled. I'm lost. And to this day, this is why I have these, um, I think I have these terrible, terrible dreams about joining a new ship. I mean, to this day, um, I'll, I'll have a dream that I'm in my old age and for some reason I've got to go back to ships and I join one of these big old fancy newfangled gigantic cruise ships and I get on there and I can't find my cabin. I can't find my office. I can't find the purser's desk. I can't find anything. I just wander around the whole time until finally somebody finds me and just fires me. You'll you'll find uh, too much. You'll find uh -huh. Eric, Eric and Eric will uh, will uh, find your way for you for forty bucks. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> if only I could have given somebody forty dollars. I'm like take take me to where I'm supposed to be working. But but this is the other one. I have another one, and, and this is reoccurring. Um, I, I decide to go back on ships in my old age, and they, they're offering me this kind of position that I've never heard of. It's some kind of weird purser position, but I'm like, hey, if, if it's a job on a ship, I'm capable. I can do it. No problem. And I get on board, and I find out I am not capable. I have no idea what it is. I have no <laughs> idea what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't understand it. I can't turn my computer on. Can't even turn my computer on, and I just sit there for the whole cruise, and then they doing nothing, and then the home office people come on. How was that different from I, what you did when you worked there? I, yeah, <laughs> not much, other than they didn't fire me as soon as we got back to the port, and they just came on and they're like, "You're fired," right on just, the spot. Just don't forget your popcorn. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> Okay, so back to the story. I'm at the first stop. I get back to the first desk. <laughs> so, Chief Purser, I'm at the Chief Purser, who is Steve Carpenter, who was one of the loveliest guys and one of the best Chief Pursers I ever worked with. Uh, first Purser was Debbie Keller. Uh, second Purser was uh, Lori Iben. Uh, Sarah Morgan, I think, was already there. Um, Lisa O'Connell was who I was replacing. So Lisa was leaving. I was taking her place. And then um, I went down and, and met my uh, cabin mate. Uh, shout out right now, Song of Norway, cabin 198, right next to the Fram. Best cabin ever. Uh, yeah, best cabin. So who was your roommate? Augie Cartagena. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know Augie. Yeah, Augie Cartagena. Best. Was a printer. Yeah, a printer purser. Printer purser so, back when. Yeah, my first exactly. roommate was Bobby Castor, who was also a printer. I've heard of Bobby Castor. I don't know him. Was uh, he? He was a uh, Caribbean, though, wasn't he? Or was he Filipino? No, he was Filipino. He was Filipino. Okay. Yeah. I think they were all Filipino at that time. They were. Yeah. yeah. All the printers were. Yeah, my my. Although my next my next roommate uh, on there, I went back. My second contract was uh, Indian guy Richard. He was. Uh, You're Indian. right. They yeah. did hire Indian guys uh, in the print shop after that because yeah. I remember. I think the person that replaced Bobby was from India. Probably the most beautiful uh, Indian man I've ever seen. He was, he 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 should have been like right out of a magazine. He was big and burly and he had this big mustache that kind of curled up just like in the movies you know he should have been a 
Shaw or something. But anyway, he was the nicest guy. Uh, but anyway, so meet my roommate, Augie Carnahena, best roommate ever, or one of the best roommates. We just got along so well. So I'm going to end it there. This is my story of how I uh, got on the song of Norway. And this is my ship story.